Borderline personality disorder is one of the most stigmatized disorders in the world. And it's also the most emotionally painful disorder anyone can have. Approximately 1.6% of the United States has BPD. That's over 5 million Americans. And yet it's severely underrepresented in the media. That's why in this video, I will be discussing a number of BPD coded characters. Because, you know, you gotta find representation wherever you can. So that means whilst they're not explicitly written as having borderline personality disorder, many people with BPD identify with these characters. And one character in particular, psychiatrists even refer to and study when discussing BPD. And that character is Anakin Skywalker. So yeah, I know that Darth Vader, the ultimate villain of the universe having BPD, doesn't exactly do much to destigmatize the disorder. But he is used as a case study to help medical students to understand and treat people with borderline personality disorder. I guess because he's such a widely known character and he actually meets six of the nine diagnostic criteria for BPD, which is one more than necessary to be diagnosed. You'll notice that Anakin has these stress-related breaks with reality that are specifically triggered by women in his life leaving him or dying. In other words, a abandoning him. So yeah, Anakin definitely displays fear of abandonment, which is pretty much the hallmark symptom of BPD. In fact, he is so permanently and deathly afraid of losing his wife that he is always making frantic efforts to avoid her abandonment, and even went as far as betraying his former Jedi companions. He also has trouble controlling his anger and has extreme impulsivity. For instance, his dangerous pod racing. And yeah, he definitely has a pattern of unstable and intense interpersonal relationships characterized by alternating between extremes of ideation and devaluation. And it pretty much sums up his entire relationship with Obi-Wan. And then of course we have his unstable sense of self, which ultimately leads to his turning to the dark side and changing his name. Now, some argue that Anakin Skywalker more fits the diagnosis of NPD, narcissistic personality disorder. And you'll see that this is a common theme throughout this video um, because a lot of people do get misdiagnosed with narcissism, which makes sense because experts say that a borderline is a failed narcissist and a narcissist is a failed sociopath and a sociopath is a failed psychopath. So what is a psychopath? They just don't fail at anything, I guess. Another factor that leads people with BPD to come off as a bit narcissistic is uh, what's known as a God complex. A God complex is an unshakable belief characterized by consistently inflated feelings of personal ability, privilege, or infallibility. <sighs> Jay Gatsby. What a beautiful, beautiful enigma. Again, there's a lot of discussion about whether Jay Gatsby is a narcissist or he has bipolar or BPD. So he could have a video all on his own and maybe he will. But in this video, I mainly want to focus on his, uh, let's call it attachment to Daisy. Because to me, this is where he gives the most uh, BPD flavors, shall we say. Why does Jay Gatsby try so hard to win back Daisy? He buys a huge mansion across the bay from her. He throws these lavish, extravagant parties that he doesn't really partake in or enjoy that much. And he does that every single week in the hopes that she will show up. He befriends Nick just to get close to her. You know, all these things, they're definitely more than just good old fashioned love. His whole life is a shrine to Daisy. Someone that essentially he just had a thing with five years ago. Meanwhile, she has moved on, gotten a husband and even a child. It's here that we have to talk about a very important and also neglected aspect of having BPD, and that is the favorite person, often shortened to FP. So I've looked up, you know, the exact definition of a favorite person, and I find, to be honest, none of the definitions or explanations on Google really fit. Um, so I'll just do it myself. Having a favorite person is definitely more than just like someone you really like or someone you really love or someone that you're codependent on. It's like they are the center of your universe and your mood depends on them. Them leaving you on red can literally derail your entire day, even if you were having the best day ever, which to be honest, if you have a favorite person, the only reason you're having the best day ever is because you've just spoken to your favorite person. <laughs> and just as you're planning how you're gonna deal with this ultimate rejection and abandonment, um, they, they text you back and you're like, oh, that was silly. <laughs> so yeah, in Gatsby's case, his favorite person is Daisy. 
which makes his behavior make a lot more sense. You know, everything he does basically revolves around getting validation and approval and love from Daisy. Uh, he also has very unstable moods. He shifts between uh, euphoria and depression very quickly. There is a, a quote from the book. Then I turned back to Gatsby and was startled at his expression. He looked as if he had killed a man. So that's Nick talking about, you know, Gatsby was in such a good mood and then, you know, he turned away for a second and he looked back and it's like his whole, his whole expression and his whole aura it's completely changed. And that happens a good few times in the book. Uh, and then of course, there's his unstable sense of identity, which again is a very big aspect of having BPD. And it's sort of this chronic feeling of emptiness and not having a sense of self and constantly trying to invent and reinvent a sense of self. Gatsby definitely does this. He started it, you know, when he changed his name to Jay Gatsby. And everything about him and his life is curated. He's less of a character and more of a caricature. Character. Character. Caricature. Hmm. And he's less of a personality and more of a persona. Bojack Horseman. Now, Bojack Horseman has become somewhat of a mascot for people with BPD. I recently just started watching it because I read the short story collection by the creator of Bo Bojack Horseman and I loved it. It was hilarious. And I kind of expected the show to be equally as funny. And it is funny, but it definitely has deeper um, undertones for sure. Uh, for instance, Bojack Horseman is definitely BPD coded. <laughs> this man, Bojack, well, this horse, is so terrified of abandonment that he, sadly, he drags down everyone around him to his level so that they won't leave him. You know, his, his good friend, Todd, he makes sure to ruin any chances that he has of success in his career so that he won't leave him. And then on the flip side, he abruptly ends relationships. He goes from idealizing someone to hating them uh, very fast, and this is something that is known as splitting. He constantly shifts from believing that he is amazing, that the best thing since sliced bread, to then thinking he's absolute trash and has no idea what to do with himself. And his goals change in pretty much every episode. He moves on from things very fast, like, I don't want to do that anymore, now I'm doing this. This is my identity, this is my personality. His friendship with Diane is the most accurate depiction of a favorite person dynamic that I've ever seen. Also his extreme moods, you know, like with Jay Gatsby, when he feels good, he feels really flipping good. And this is something known as euphoria. It's sort of like hypomania, but a lot shorter. Next we have Romeo from Romeo and Juliet and also kind of Juliet. I feel like this play is a perfect example of what can happen if you romanticize mental illness and personality disorders instead of, you know, actually getting help for them. Romeo goes from being a lovesick and heartbroken over Rosaline to then falling in love and marrying Juliet only having known her like a day. You could argue that they are each other's FP. He's also very impulsive. Romeo's impulsiveness that causes him to stab Tybalt. And yeah, ultimately they kill themselves so that they don't have to experience real or imagined abandonment. Joe Goldberg. I, I have a confession. I am a Joe Goldberg apologist, okay? I just am. I want him to be my boyfriend and I know that that will result in him killing people in my life. <laughs> But if that's what he needs to do, that, like, that's what he needs to do. I trust him. <laughs> because of childhood trauma, Joe develops borderline personality disorder, chronic obsession, and also codependency. BPD is basically the brain responding with tools, systems, and a solution for the severe abandonment and or rejection the child experienced in their relationship with their parents, siblings, and or caregivers very early on in their life. I would say that Joe probably has comorbidity with narcissism because he is not at all ever able to take responsibility for his actions. Whereas people with BPD very much are able to feel shame and apologize and take accountability for their actions. But as for his fear of abandonment, it is so huge and all consuming that yes, he does indeed murder people. Whether it's anyone who stands between him and his love, his favorite person, or in some cases it is his favorite person so that they won't abandon him. He is also extremely delusional. When he sets his sight on a woman and puts her on this pedestal, 
he interprets every little action that she does as being for him and him alone. It's almost bordering on psychosis, which can happen in extreme cases of borderline personality disorder. And then we have his intense and inappropriate anger. He can't seem to deal with even the slightest bit of uncertainty or inconvenience. And instead of dealing with these feelings, they are so overwhelming that he needs to just lock whoever calls the feelings in his special glass box thing. But he does care about people, especially children. So I don't think he's a psychopath or a sociopath. The Mad Hatter. Now, the Mad Hatter displays traits of BPD and ADHD. In the Mad Tea Party scene, the Hatter goes through a wide range of emotions and thoughts. One minute he is angry at the March Hare for suggesting the use of butter on his watch. Then he calmly pours hot tea on the Dormouse. And seconds later, he changes the topic completely and asks Alice whether or not she has solved his riddle. And then we have his identity disturbance. Although he knows he is the Mad Hatter, he doesn't seem like he knows this all the time. Especially in the 2010 version, the Mad Hatter saw himself as being with the White Queen. But after the Queen of Heart took over, he no longer knew who he was. Some people also believe he has chronic feelings of emptiness and he hides them by being eccentric. I think this is a bit of a stretch. <laughs> Some people are genuinely just eccentric. But I will say that when the Queen of Hearts took over, he could no longer do what he loved, being with the White Queen, and he kind of lost all meaning for life. So then he definitely did feel empty. So that's all guys. I could probably make another video because there's actually a lot more BPD coded characters out there. Uh, a lot of anime characters specifically. Uh, so let me know if you want me to do that. And also, like I said at the start of the video, BPD is one of the most emotionally painful disorders. So the next time you see someone acting out in these ways, instead of just thinking, wow, that look how crazy that person is. Maybe just think, wow, that person, must be in so much pain. Yeah, I don't know. But also, none of these characters are real, or are they? <laughs> you can watch this video. <laughs> are fictional characters real? And, you know, we can find out.